So one of the biggest mysteries surrounding Doflamingo has always been, what is behind them their glasses? A mystery that would never be solved until now. Because I am here to present Doflamingo's deep dark secret, which is that his eyes were surgically replaced with YouTube subscribe buttons. Pressing either one of which will result in a subscription to the Grand Line Review, which will allow you to receive regular One Piece content uploaded straight into your YouTube feed. And the reason why Doflamingo always wears glasses is because, well, he, uh, he got sick of people consistently poking him in the eyes. Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece, and more specifically, Sagas in Minutes, the series that aims to equip you with the basic knowledge to leap into the wilderness of One Piece. And today it's time we continue one of the most ambitious sagas ever constructed, that is Dressrosa. The Dressrosa Saga is the eighth in the series, consisting of two arcs, but an absolutely mega 148 chapters, which does make it the longest saga we have covered to date, and hence why we need this whole part two business, because we have a lot to cover here today. Where we last left off, the Straw Hat slash Trafalgar Law Alliance had been split into three groups, one of which was tasked with infiltrating Dressrosa to destroy the Smile Factory, led by Luffy, whilst another headed to Green Bit to exchange his clown as a hostage, led by Law, and a faction to protect the Thousand Sunny, led by no one in particular, but we'll say Nami, because she usually ends up being in charge. So a couple of things here. With Luffy's group, they almost immediately encounter a Marine Admiral, although they don't know it, as he is currently passing himself off as a run-of-the-mill blind gambler, although things do get somewhat serious. When Luffy informs him that he is being cheated, and he buries the Game Masters in an awfully deep hole. In any case, this man is later revealed to be Marine Admiral Fujitora, who wields a particularly powerful Paramecia fruit known as the Zushi Zushi no Mi, which allows him to control gravity to varying degrees. Following this, Luffy discovers that there is a tournament being conducted nearby in the Corridor see him, the prize of which is the Mera Mera no Mi, a devil fruit once used by his brother. And so Luffy takes Doflamingo's bait and enters the tournament under the brilliant alias of Lucy. And here Lucy meets a whole cast of characters who will go on to become wildly important during this arc, one of which we will specifically zero in on being Cavendish, a pirate who holds a supreme hatred for every member of the worst generation and who is hell-bent on killing them, which yes, does include Luffy at this stage. And another one of note would be Bartolomeo, who is the exact opposite as he worships Luffy and the straw hats like a deranged fanboy. A lovable deranged fanboy though. We were also introduced to a figure named Ricky, who is not touted to be anything important, but who would turn out to be King Riku Doldo III, the former King of Dressrosa, who a decade ago had his island commandeered by the current King Doflamingo, who used his string devil fruit abilities to force Riku to slaughter his own people and to sway public opinion away from the Riku family, to say the least, allowing Doflamingo to take control of the island. And I would also be remiss not to single out Rebecca, a fairly at this point mysterious gladiator who is fighting to win the Mera Mera no Mi in order to use it to kill Doflamingo. Oh, and rather interestingly, Dressrosa also sees the return of Bellamy, the opponent who Luffy one shot back in the Skypiea saga, who still works for Doflamingo, but who has matured beyond all belief, and who now holds a huge degree of respect for Luffy. And the tournament breaks down as follows. Essentially, all of the fighters are grouped into four blocks, A, B, C, and D. The members of these blocks are then all thrown into the arena at the same time, and a battle royale is conducted until only one fighter remains standing. And getting into things, the winner of block A would be, rather surprisingly, Jesus Burgess, member of the Blackbeard Pirates, who was masked masquerading as a character named Happy Store. But the fact that the Blackbeard Pirates have any presence on Dressrosa whatsoever imbues this arc with a whole new layer of sinister feelings. And Luffy even briefly spoke to Blackbeard via Den Den Mushi and declared that he would not allow them to take Ace's Devil Fruit. Moving to Block B, and this was quite a chaotic affair, featuring a newly almost heroic Bellamy and a man whose punch was rumored to be able to take down one of the four emperors. Neither one of them would win though, as in the end, the ultimate troll Bartolomeo proved victorious due to his Bari Bari no Mi abilities. Despite stopping mid combat, combat to take a piss. To the main event, we now look to Block C, which came down to a fierce battle between Monkey D. Luffy and Don Chin Zhao, a veteran pirate who held a grudge against Luffy's grandfather Garp, although not only was Luffy able to defeat him, but he also incidentally fixed Chin Zhao's head, causing the veteran pirate to pledge his loyalty to Luffy, which will become a common feature during the saga. And as for Block D, the eventual winner would be Rebecca, after Cavendish revealed his split personality, Hakuba, who proceeded to wreck every other contestant by Rebecca, and then promptly fell asleep, resulting in one final battle royale, consisting of Jesus Burgess, Bartolomeo, Lucy, Rebecca, and the champion of the Colosseum, Diamante, who was one of Doflamingo's most trusted officers. However, Luffy would not actually fight in this match, as prior to its commencement, he received the shock of a lifetime when Sabo, a childhood brother of Luffy thought to be long dead, revealed himself and requested permission to consume Ace's Devil Fruit, which Luffy gave gladly and just in time to exit the Colosseum and begin to deal with the true meat of Dressrosa. Because while these events were occurring, there was no shortage of shenaniganry elsewhere, as Sanji had found himself in a precarious position 
obsession with Viola, a member of the Don Quixote Pirates, who fooled him with her feminine wiles. But of course, it is later revealed that Viola is a princess of the former monarchy, the Riku family, and despite her villainous actions thus far, was all for bringing down Doflamingo. And so Viola would also go on to inform Sanji that his crew was in imminent danger. At the same time, Frankie was exploring the island and ended up making friends with a toy soldier who would reveal a seedy underbelly of Dressrosa, as it turned out that there was a member of Doflamingo's crew named Sugar, who had the ability to turn living beings into toys, as well as to go on to enslave them. And this toy soldier himself had been a victim of Sugar, and while he was human, he was named Kuros, formerly known as the Invincible Gladiator, as well as the commander of the Riku Royal Army. And perhaps most importantly of all, the father of Colosseum Gladiator, Rebecca. Meanwhile, the Sunny Protection Team were being assaulted by a member of the Don Quixote Pirates named Jorah, who turned everyone into splendid modern art, but was promptly defeated by the very quick thinking of an underrated Straw Hat member by the name of Brooke. And things had not gone to plan for the Caesar Exchange team either on Green Bit, as by this time, both Robin and Usopp had been captured slash stumbled into the territory of the Tontata tribe, a group of very gullible dwarves, who as with many factions in and around Dressrosa, were planning to mount an assault on the current King Doflamingo. And in their case, this was because he had enslaved a huge portion of their tribe for the purposes of creating artificial devil fruits in the Smile Factory. But here Usopp did what Usopp does best, and he ended up lying about being some legendary hero, and he became known by the Tontanda tribe as Usoland, and was subsequently charged with leading their assault on Doflamingo. That's all right though, I'm sure Usopp can handle it. Although if he can't, then luckily the Tontanda tribe would eventually liaise with the toy soldier as well as Frankie in order to discuss their impending assault. Also on Green Bit, Law's plan to exchange Caesar had rapidly gone downhill as he found himself in a two-on-one battle against not only Doflamingo, but also Marine Admiral Fujitora. And it's safe to say that Law was not expecting to deal with an Admiral due to the fact that part of his bargain was to have Doflamingo resign from the Seven Warlords and thus cut all ties with the world government. Unfortunately for Law, this turned out to be but a clever ruse by Doflamingo, who had used his mysterious leverage over the world government to publish his resignation and then have it revoked. With the people of Dressrosa being informed of this by CP0, the strongest cell of Cypherpol agents who work directly for the world nobles. And in the case of Fujitora, well, he was sent specifically to deal with Trafalgar Law as well as Monkey D. Luffy. But in a last ditch effort, Law was able to make sure that Doflamingo did not reclaim Caesar, with him ending up back on the Thousand Sunny, along with Sanji, who briefly took on Doflamingo directly. However, in this dire, dire situation, the decision was made to have the Sunny Protection Team, now including Sanji, immediately move on to the next island of Zo. However, this was much easier said than done because at this very moment, the flagship of the Big Mom Pirates, the Queen Mama Chanta appeared, who in addition to being incredibly hostile to the Straw Hats, also had a vested interest in capturing Caesar Clown. It really is kind of amazing the efforts that all of these individuals will go to in order to secure a single clown boy. But faced with a faction of the four emperors, Sanji made the simple request to Luffy over a Dendon Mushi, which was permission to strike back, which Luffy instantly gave because, well, he had already declared war on Big Mom back on Fishman Island. Now, as for everyone else on the island, which at this stage consisted of Luffy, Zoro, Robin, Frankie, Usopp, Law, and Ginnemon, who we haven't spoken about much yet, but he's also there. In any case, this group would make the decision to remain on Dressrosa to complete their mission of destroying the Smile Factory, and more importantly, to defeat Doflamingo. And once again, this was much easier said than done, especially when Zoro and Kinemon were confronted directly by both Doflamingo and Fujitora, the latter proving to briefly overwhelm Zoro with his gravity-related abilities. As such, Zoro and Kinemon made a hasty retreat as Fujitora and Doflamingo made their way to the country's palace with a gravely wounded Trafalgar Law in tow. Upon reaching the palace though, Fujitora made it very clear that his actions on the island were only being conducted as a result of his direct orders, and he warned Doflamingo not to consider him an ally. Fujitora then stated that his ultimate ambition was to make sure that the Seven Warlord system would be abolished by the world government, which of course included Doflamingo's status. And having said all of this to a very volatile madman, this led to a violent clash between Fujitora and Doflamingo, but the action did not proceed from there. In any case, our group of protagonists all had one clear mission now, with Luffy, Zoro, and Kidamon gunning straight towards the palace to deal with Doflamingo, whilst Frankie was to act as a rather loud diversion for the Don Quixote pirates, whilst Usopp, Robin, and a host of the Tontata tribe members infiltrated Dressrosa's underground port with the goal of bringing down Sugar. As with her devil fruit powers, the allied forces would stand no chance in this mission. And just on Sugar for a bit, her abilities were put to predictably sinister use in regards to the Corridor Coliseum, as every fighter wounded and admitted to medical treatment was subsequently turned into a toy by Sugar and then put to work as slaves in the underground port. And so when Usopp and Robin marched in with, no joke, the fate of the entire island on their shoulders, not only were they unfortunately met by Sugar, but also Treble, another one of Doflamingo's most trusted officers. And this duo succeeded in defeating everyone except for Usopp, who was forced to admit the reality that he was no legendary hero. However, instead he made a new claim that from today onwards, he would become the Tontata tribe's legendary hero. Proceeding to take on both Sugar and Treble heroically and promptly losing. However, in one of the most incredible twists of fate in the entire 
entire series, Sugar would end up feeding Usopp the weapon designed to bring her down, which resulted in what can only be described as this face, which terrified Sugar and knocked her out. And at this very moment, the tide of the Dressrosa saga rapidly shifted, as every single being that had been turned into a toy, be they a citizen of the country or a Colosseum fighter, was reverted back to their original form. And they were pretty pissed off to say the least, as they decided that the Straw Hat Pirates had been their saviors and en masse marched on Doflamingo, which would be the catalyst for one of the largest and most chaotic battles that we have ever seen in the series. Next time on Sagas in Minutes, we are finishing this very convoluted story in nothing less than an epic fashion as we take on part three of the Dress Rosa Saga. But what do you guys think? Please do leave your thoughts in the comments below or even join my Discord server. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, then please do go check out some of my other content or even subscribe to the channel for more glorious One Piece business uploaded straight to your YouTube feeds. But for now, this has been the Grand Line Review and I'll see you next time.